pounds. Could you imagine two pound hailstones falling from the sky, let alone a hundred pound hailstones? The Bible says that there was a hailstorm in Egypt when Moses was drawing the Israelites away. That that hailstorm killed all the cattle that were out in the field. By the way, in Egypt there was a, an idol that was worshipped. It had the head of a cow and its name, are you ready for this, was I-S-I-S, Isis. And God says, you want to worship a cow? I'm going to show you some hailstone that could take every hamburger away from your cities. The hail would tear down everything that could be identified as trees. No lumber, no shelter. Uh, all of that's gone now. Building materials. The hundred pound hailstones fall. You might wonder, how would that destroy mankind? Couldn't they find shelter? Listen, the earthquake, the earthquake just took place, and everything that you could shelter under probably was destroyed. You might think that all of these sores and all of this blood on the earth was no consolation to people. They have these sores. The sun was baking them, and possibly this all started with the rain, and people went out into the rain to get something cool on their skin, maybe opening their mouth to try to get fresh water in their throat, and all of a sudden the hail starts. And what do they do? Mankind, being stiff-necked, curse God and blaspheme his names. His name. The signs come from heaven, but people don't look up to the creator of heaven. I want to close today with where I started. In chapter 16 and verse 1, the Bible says the angels were sent to pour out the bowls of wrath of God on the earth. This is not my home. I'm just a passing through. You know, so often we spend so much time on the things that we own, and yet they will just crumble or rust or fade away. Way back yonder, when I spent some time with Grandma and Grandpa on the farm, and I was doing something that I probably shouldn't have done, could you imagine that? That Grandma would stick her head out the, the uh, farmhouse back door looking for me, and she would yell this, Steve! What on earth are you doing for heaven's sake? <laughs> Listen, we live here, and Satan surely has reign on this earth, doesn't he? But we live far above and beyond that because we serve a risen Savior, and he's got a kingdom far, far, far above and beyond the stars. And we'll be there with him forever and ever and ever. Sometimes I'll close a funeral service knowing that the person was a Christian and that they're in heaven. And, and I've asked the crowd to respond to this. Are you ready for this? I would say, if Uncle Bob could send you a message right now, what would he say? Uh, all right, come on up. All right. I've had some strange responses. But I want to tell you something. We're going to be so enthralled with the wonderful city of heaven when we get there, that if we could ever send a message to our family and friends, I think we would say this. This is such a marvelous place. Don't miss it for the world. Don't miss it for the world. Don't trade this stuff down here for being with Jesus forever and ever and ever. Let's bow our hearts and our heads together. Oh Lord, what a beautiful place it is. What longing we have in our hearts to be there with you. How we wish that we'll see you soon face to face. But until that time, we dwell here on earth. Where you've told us to keep our garments clean and watch. And every once in a while, Lord, it's important for you to make us sit down and put our feet in the bowl and, yet, and let you wash them. Please keep forgiving us. Thank you, Lord, for the hope that we have. And maybe this morning 
as we've gathered together, some, someone here does not have that hope. That if they were to pass today, there's no promise in their hearts that they would be with Christ forever in heaven. This morning as we sing, we pray that your Holy Spirit would tug on their hearts to come and trust our Savior as theirs. Maybe some are praying about making this their church home. Maybe following you in believer's baptism this morning. Help them, Lord, to make that decision publicly as the preacher stands here to receive them. Bless our hearts. In Jesus' name. We're going to sing a closing hymn. It's called Face to Face. It's number 781. Let's sing the first and last stanzas. Are you ready to meet Christ face to face? There's your question. Let's stand together. Number 781, face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face, what will it be?